South welcoming tonight one of the most exciting teams in the NBA as the high-flying Sacramento Kings come into beautiful Phillips Arena in Atlanta with the best winning percentage in the NBA facing an Atlanta Hawks team that has beaten them nine consecutive games. The Kings have won four straight, including a win over Miami Sunday and the Spurs a week ago. Now with Utah losing last night to San Antonio, Minnesota beating Philadelphia, well, top the NBA, you see them, the Sacramento Kings. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Kevin Harlan, John Thompson, Danny Ainge, and Craig Sager from Atlanta. Well, for the last two seasons, the darlings of the NBA have been the Sacramento Kings with their riveting style of play. Yet their team really hasn't been complete until now. Now they play defense to go along with all those wonderful components on offense. So the team is having their best start in the history of their franchise, and they come in tonight 14-4. and four. And who better to talk about defense in Sacramento than Danny Ainge? Hey, I can play some defense. Well, maybe you could. But nonetheless, I mean, it's almost like a dual personality now with this team. They play offense well, and now they're playing some D. Well, you know, this team, everybody knows that they can lead the league in scoring, shooting, passing, and highlights, but they want some highlights in the month of June, and the only way to do that is to improve on the horrible defense they had last year. You see, 12 points less a game they're giving their opponents, third in the NBA in defensive field goal percentage, and second in steals. And speaking of steals, second himself in the league, Doug Christie, who I believe is the catalyst to this defensive resurgence by the Sacramento Kings. I think just everyone trying to play defense more than anything you know uh, in practice we push each other we go through a lot of one-on-one -on -one drills and stuff that you know makes you stand up and you just have to play your guy and then we're just out there trying to help each other and having the faith that when one guy drops one guy moves over someone else is going to be there to, to help you out now this team has the quickness and the size to be great defensively but they have to have the mentality on the road every night. We'll see how long this lasts. Well, they had their growing pains, and now Atlanta is having their growing pains. With their first-year coach, a guy who came from the college ranks with great success, Lon Kruger, now John, a pro coach in the NBA. What kind of challenges do you think he's going through right now? Well, Kevin, he has a lot of challenges, and particularly he's changed his starting lineup ten different times this early in the season. The other challenge that he has to call, overcome is the stigma of being a college coach. Most coaches who come out of college have an opportunity to coach the most condemned teams in the NBA. <laughs> well, they're not all the way condemned because they still got Dikembe Mutombo. We've got him as well. He's standing by with our Craig Sager. Well, there are a lot of questions with the Hawks, but perhaps the biggest one, will Dikembe Mutombo remain in Atlanta? What are your thoughts? Uh, right now, my focus is to go and continue to play and I'm trying to finish the season strong and whatever happens after that. And we will see that later. The trade rumors continue, though. Do you think you'll be traded? Uh, I still don't know. I, I'm not trying to get myself get caught between the rumors, but uh, I'm trying to just be focused on playing basketball. You missed the first five games with a case of malaria. How's your health? It's doing very good right now. I'm like by 95%. I'm willing to be 100% very soon. There's a nationwide television audience watching at home, but John Thompson's here in person. Don't disappoint him. I will not. That's my man. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Back to Kevin. Well, John, you spent a lot of time with uh, Dikembe today. There are a lot of trade rumors swirling around him right now. What is the frame of mind that he comes into this season with, and especially tonight against the Kings? Well, Kevin, I think he said it. He said that he wasn't paying much attention to the trade rumors now. He said the most difficult thing that he has to adjust to is shaking hands. Shaking hands with every owner almost in every city that he goes in. The other thing that David Falk told me, his agent, that it was no validity to any of the rumors right now, that everything is a little bit stagnant right now. Well, as is our norm, we're going to send it to the studios with Ernie Johnson. Hey, and hey, 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 no toss to the studio necessary tonight, right here, big fella. Baby. You're in right our right town. You come in here town. with no hole pass either. <laughs> yeah, and you come here and you miss the whole point of the Kings-Hawks game. Last time Sacramento won in this city, 1988 when my good friend Kenny the Jet Smith was but a rookie in Doing this league. Doing his thing with 24, getting it busy right there. Yeah, almost Forget half of what Dominique had. Bike. Forget Dominique, they lost that night. And look, the other name, Reggie Thea, is on there. Is hey, this forget game. the hot pants too, Ernie. Don't worry about those. <laughs> but see, Ernie, I played only one back on defense. That's why we only won like 12 games that year. And, and then Reggie... 
Doesn't play defense, but yes, he does know how to put the ball in the basket. Over Randy Whitman for the game winner, the last time the Kings won a game in the city of Atlanta. That's the story tonight. I'm glad we were able to bring it to you. And these are pretty good seats, you know, your courtside and everything, Jet. But we can one game. I, yeah, one game. I got to get out of here, man. <laughs> People behind me. Where's security at? <laughs> All right, as they go back to their post, we'll go to our post. And we'll get the Hawks and the Kings underway next on TBS NBA Tuesday. 1-800 call ATT for collect calls. By Daytech Online. Believe it or not, all online brokers are not the same. Daytech Online, built to trade. And by the legendary Jeep Grand Cherokee. The perfect combination of refinement, comfort, and off-road capability. It's the gorgeous Phillips Arena on TBS NBA Tuesday. Tonight, the Kings against the Hawks. Sacramento tonight, backcourt, of course, Jason Williams, along with Doug Christie, to Corlew, Divots, and Weber. Weber's having a sensational season. And for the Atlanta Hawks, Matt Maloney with Terry in the backcourt, Jackson, Matumbo, and Alan Henderson on the front line. Kembe is Hale and Hardy. Sacramento has not won in Atlanta in 11 seasons and nine consecutive overall. They come in at 14 and four, and the Kings with a four and three road record. And here we go from Phillips Arena. It's Maloney against Williams, and here's Jason Terry. Everyone talking about this second-year player who works on Christie, who has added wonderful defense for the Kings. Henderson driving inside. Christie was the one who tagged him and draws the game's first foul. Danny, let's take a look at the Kings and stylistically, what do you think is going to happen? Well, the Kings, you know, we talked about their defense in the open. We know their offensive abilities. But one guy who's having a fantastic year for them is Stojakovic, and they're without him tonight. But this young kid, Turkoglu, he is very special, and I think we're going to see the coming of a great player in the future. John? Well, I think Atlanta wants to get off defensively and hope to get out fast break because they don't feel that they're a good half-court set shooting team. Terry misses the shot. Here come the Kings for the first time on offense. And an illegal defense is blown against the Atlanta Hawks for the first time. Well, you can see what Sacramento's trying to do. They got Vladi standing all the way out at the hash mark to try to draw Dikembe away from the basket. Dikembe's looking very confused out there, but I can assure you, Dikembe, that that is illegal. Juan Kruger, who left the University of Illinois to take this job for big bucks, and his team comes in tonight, 14 and 16. Nice interception by Matumbo. Well, that was very good anticipation, but he was able to do it because of what Danny said. He was not playing Divock, and he was shading back towards the middle. Henderson to Dikembe over Divac, and a nice sweeping hook shot by Dikembe Matumbo. You know what was interesting? I talked with Rick Mahon earlier, and he said that he had been telling Dikembe to establish a presence in the middle and look for his easy little hook shot. Weber with the miss. Good offensive rebound by Divac, forced outside by Henderson. Divac is struggling to get this season going for him, but Chris Weber is not. Weber has been hot. Danny, the number four score coming into tonight in the NBA. Well, Weber definitely gets his touches and gets the opportunities. He's playing with a lot of confidence and takes a lot of shots. Vlade is not playing with any sort of passion on offense or any sort of confidence. They need him to go to the next level. Matumbo shoved outside by Divac. Here come the Kings, led by Jason Williams. His shooting percentage has skyrocketed this year. And a three-point shot from outside right down the middle. And that's the kind of shot that he hasn't been taking as much of. The one right in transition, in slow transition, I should say, five on five. He's, no, he's been taking the spot up three-pointers, only averaging three a game versus six last year. Well, if he keeps taking those threes, I think his shooting percentage will drop, too. Yes. He's been getting a lot out of transition, according to his coach. Allen Henderson with a nice corkscrew move inside. Well, they need to establish something on the inside against this Sacramento defense. To Carlos. Weber and on top to Divac who drives into Matumbo by Matumbo who comes from beside the wing and knocked it away but then Christie was there to vacuum it in and put it up and down and the Kings on top by three. Oh, Dikembe got away from a goaltend right there. Vlade has been struggling offensively. He needs one of those to get his confidence back. And Maloney hits outside. 
Well, and I like Maloney. I don't think he has a lot of athleticism, but in looking at him on this team, he probably helps to stabilize a lot. He's not going to be good against a real quick guard defensively, but offensively, I think he's unselfish and looks to mix the pass. And a foul called on Jimmy Jackson. That's his first. first. Well, right here, you can see that, D, that he's illegal again, but they had just called one, and so they're not going to call a second one illegally. And right here, Dikembe's tough when he gets a little jump hook in the paint. He's so long. He can get away with it all the time. And right here, hits the backboard, gets away with a goaltend. Kept waiting for the call, but they didn't assess it. And Devon floats it inside to Corlew, outside, and it's caught by Christie for three. And Matumbo corrals a rebound for the Atlanta Hawks. And that is his second. Other end of the floor, Henderson can't get it. Devon's defending. Well, that's the basket that Lawrence said he wanted to get, and why he missed the Kembe early that he outlets the ball and they can get down and get a fast break basket. Chris Weber with a wonderful move down to the block. Well, that's a beautiful move. He's got, he's such a versatile offensive player. He can score in so many different ways. And Jason Terry at the other end. This kid's been sensational, averaging over 21 points a game, taking the place of the then injured Jimmy Jackson. Now Jackson's back and Terry stays at the two. Well, and you talk about those labels, Danny. I think Terry kind of likes that label of two if it entails letting him shoot more. <laughs> he's a goal. He's not a point. He's not a two. He's a guard. He can play either position, but he's really a scorer. And this team needs his scoring. Shot clock at two. Williams to Weber to Devot. And a 24-second shot clock violation. So a turnover for Rick Adelman's team. The second. You see, Weber is the hub of the offense. He catches the ball about half the time right there at the elbow. He has a quickness advantage, great ball handling skills, can score in the block, a variety of moves in this offensive, his offensive game right now. And that's why he's a definite MVP candidate early in the season. Both teams have started four of seven from the field. Matumbo against Devons. Vladi knocks it away. Takorlu picks it up, and here comes Williams again. Takorlu. Into Jackson, out to Vladi for two and over Matumbo. Nice rebound by Henderson. Well, the Kings will have a lot of, uh, of problems. I mean, uh, Atlanta will have a lot of problems if Vladi can hit that shot because the Kimbe's then got to go out and play him. But if he misses it, the Kimbe's going to zone in the middle of the lane and block shots. Maloney missed the drive by Williams and a whistle blown inside on the Atlanta Hawks. And Maloney will pick up his first of the game. You can see Vlade's got great hands. He's been doing this in frustrating centers his whole career. He's got great anticipation. He plays defense like a guard at the center position. Rick Hands. And not very tough inside. <laughs> <laughs> the Corlew. Wow, knocked away with Terry in the size mismatch. And he'll pick up a foul. This kid made one of the all-rookie teams a season ago. He is the first Atlanta player, first Atlanta rookie to make an all-rookie team since 1991 when Stacy Ogman was here, and that shows you that this team has not had a great deal of success drafting. Or they've been drafting late, one, one of the two. Well, but even though you would think at least over those many years, one guy would have surfaced on one of the three all-rookie teams. But in a lot of bad teams, rookies don't get a chance to play, or on good teams, rookies don't get a chance to play a lot. But it's interesting how they have Jason Terry defending Turkoglu early in this game uh, with the size advantage that Turkoglu has. He's closer to six foot nine. Yes. Turkoglu is from Istanbul, Turkey, and makes his third pro start tonight. Terry looking for Jackson. Tocorlu is on him. Doubled by Christie, and Terry trying to get out of the grip and finds Henderson cutting through the lane. About five minutes gone here in the first quarter. Henderson facing defense outside. Jackson for three. Good! Jimmy Jackson, who's missed the last eight games with the knee, is back and nails it from outside. Well, and that's the other advantage or disadvantage that Takorlu would have because then he's got to play Jackson at the other end. If Jackson starts to hit, he's got to be able to move and he's got to get out there on it. Ooh, Williams with a feed to Devons, who's trying to joust with Matumbo and doesn't win that. But Kembe alters the shot. Henderson cleans it up and Terry racing the other way, working on Christie. Devon really isn't taking his shot with confidence, Danny. You know, what I saw him years ago doing, he looks very tentative shooter. And John, his shooting percentage is at an all-time low. Devots comes in two tonight, shooting 42%. He's a career 50% shooter. Well, particularly with the Kembe gardening, Kevin, he's got to hit that shot, although he's very capable of making passes from that position. Maloney with the interception and gets the deuce at the other end, so he does it on both sides. 
Well, you know, right now, Sacramento is not playing with any sort of... They, they're just messing with this Atlanta team. They have no respect. And Atlanta, these are always teams, scary teams to play because they have no fear. They're just coming down, jacking up shots, and, and they're hitting them early in the game. Weber misses his first right there. Boy, when is the last time Danny Atlanta's been on TV? They may know that they're on TV. <laughs> That's incentive for a lot of players. That's right. Here comes the tumbo. And Terry launching a three. Rebound by Weber, five half to play in the first. Uh, but right now, you know, they're such a fast break team. Great block by Dikembe right there. <laughs> but two guys on Sacramento didn't even get across half court. Great block shot by Dikembe Mutombo. It's Allen Henderson out of the University of Indiana. And Jacorla is right there. Now the Hawks are shooting 46%, Kings 36%. Well, Danny is absolutely correct. Sacramento is really struggling coming back down the court. Where is the energy? They played Sunday and won against Miami in the West Coast. And a three-second violation is called inside. So that turns it over. And that is the fourth turnover against the Kings. But inside, the three-time NBA Defensive Player of the Year is hurt from early. Four. The NBA. Eighth in points allowed, and in steals, they are number two in the NBA. And inside, they work on defensive rebounding, number one in the NBA in that category. And fighting for everything they can grab onto inside and then finishing like that. And block shots, one of the best in the league in that category. Not great size on Sacramento, but nonetheless, John, defense has been their calling card, thus the reason why they're the best team record-wise, percentage-wise, right now in the NBA. Well, if you mix that with what they had been transitionally, offensively, it just affords them an opportunity to get out and to run more. If they're playing good, solid defense, holding their opponent, getting missed baskets and stolen balls, Kevin, they can play the wide-open game they like to play. Renzen Wright has checked in for the first time in the game, and outside the shot by Jackson won't go. Sacramento has missed their last four shots as they come the other way, and they're starting five still on the floor. Ebus finally, finally hits from outside. Well, they need him to hit outside, especially Dikembe just guarding the paint in there. He's going to have that open jumper all night long. But, you know, Allen Henderson was questionable even for tonight's game, and I think that shoulder is definitely bothering him, and that's why they got Lorenzen in so early. Yes, yeah, slightly separated shoulder, in fact, for Henderson, who suffered the other night against Cleveland. Ah! Lorenzen right, the ex-Clipper inside, lost it. Corlew comes out with it, digs it, feeds up to Williams. Roddy on to Doug Christie. A very good time in his career. He has seen a lot in his many years in the NBA. Slashing down the baseline, but can't get the jam. And Terry, beautiful feed to Maloney through traffic and right on the money. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to get out and run because, as we said at the top of the show, they're a little bit questioning how well they shoot outside. So if they can defend, get out and run, they're going to cause Sacramento some problems in here tonight. And everybody involved, all 10 starters have scored. Divac hits his second long-range shot. Well, you know, I, right now, the Sacramento Kings are not playing with much energy or passion at changing ends either way, Coach. They're not running on offense, and they're not running on defense. And, uh, you know, I'm glad we put that defensive graphic in there because that could change if they keep not, if they don't get back in transition. Williams to Christie, slithering down the lane. Lost it inside. Matumbo is there. Maloney, Terry over Divas. He can't convert. Rebound by Williams. Christie launching a two from 20. <laughs> Kimbe standing back in the lane. He pulled. <laughs> it was a smart decision. He pulled up and shot that. But you know, I'm noticing. We were talking about Malaria and Dikembe. He looks windy, too, because he's such a natural runner. He looks like he's sucking air. I wonder how strong he really is right now. Well, if anybody should know, it should be you. Wright has missed two shots badly. Weber sliding past Maloney and throws the hammer down at the other end. Great transition right there. It all started by the defense and the outlet pass. But again, only two Sacramento Kings ran. Maybe they knew that Weber was going to score the easy one that time. Inside, good pass by Lorenzen Wright. Sneaks it into Jimmy Jackson. The Kings on top by two. Their biggest lead has been four through the lane. Devons vacuums in that loose ball. Approaching two minutes to play in the first quarter. Jason Williams. Rebound by Matumbo. Well, and Divax hit his last two outside shots. That time I noticed Dikembe didn't stand back in the lane. He respected him and came out on that. 
Matumbo sets a screen and Jackson fires and it does not go in. With Williams finding Christie at the other end. He stepped out of bounds. Doug Christie, by the way, has done so many wonderful and tangible things for this team, like setting up Chris Weber. And Weber flies in, one of the premier players in the NBA. The Kings by two. Iowa State, Carlissimo from Seton Hall, Kruger from Illinois, and Leonard Hamilton from the University of Miami. Well, and if you look at that, most of those were afforded an opportunity to coach teams that were terrible at the time that they coached those teams. And people right away are ready to react and say the college coach cannot coach in the pros. Well, I'd love to see some of these guys get the top flight jobs that are in the NBA and then we determine how much they know. Lon Cougar is a heck of a basketball coach. But when you coach this team that he has here, it's going to take time. Pollard has come in for the Kings. Medela, the rookie from Utah, has come in for the Atlanta Hawks, and Larry Robinson has checked in. Terry, he's oh Johnson, and outside, the shot will not fly. And here comes Turkola again. And he collides into a couple of Hawks, including Johnson and Terry. I like this kid, Turkolo. He just, he is just being patient. He passes the ball when he should. He takes his man off the dribble. That time he knew he had the rookie. Demar Johnson defending him and took the opportunity to try to get him up, beat him off the dribble, which is its weakness right now, trying to defend the perimeter, being at 6'9", 19-year-old. Well, I think you're absolutely right, Danny. He sensed Demar was on him right away and went to the basket. He also probably sensed the fact that Kemba Mutombo was not back under the basket also. Menela knocked that one away. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Christie will inbound. Kings have made just one substitution. Medela again alters the shot by Williams, and here comes Jason Terry. Weaving through traffic, takes it inside with the whistle blown on the Kings. Tonight's key stat is fast break points. And we'll keep track of this for you throughout the game tonight. And right now, the Kings are top of that quarter category, 7-4. to four. Scott Power picks up the foul for the Kings. Free throw line is Jason Terry. A lot of times teams don't want to run against Sacramento. They want to slow down the tempo. But Lon Kruger told us today, hey, we run. That's our identity. If that is our identity, he's still trying to figure it out with all these different lineups. But he is not afraid to run. He says that's the strength of our team, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to attack these teams because they have a very difficult time scoring in the half-court offense. You know, the, excuse me, Kevin. The thing that I find interesting also, Dan, is what you said about he's a guard. Anytime you tell a guy he's a two guard, automatically in today's game, he starts to shoot the basketball more. <laughs> as opposed to the fact of just saying, hey, you know, he's a guard. I play the guard position. I use good judgment. I take my shots if I'm able to shoot, and I do the things that are sensible. Call him two, and he will shoot. <laughs> John Barry has checked in for the Kings. Bobby Jackson is in the game as well. Yes, That's Danny. He knows. He knows. <laughs> hey, I liked it. You know, I played with Dennis Johnson for eight years, you know, and we were guards. We took the path of least resistance to bring it up we That's both exactly. shot we both dribbled you know I just do not like it there's not very many John Stockton's out there in basketball and so you need to learn to be able to do everything Lamar Johnson hits from outside he is a rookie from Cincinnati when he came out of high school he was the number one rated high school basketball player in the country and what a player. He's, a lot of his game is going to be in front of him. I've seen him play since he's a kid. I mean, this kid can handle the ball. He can, he can pass. He can do a lot of things for a person that size. Bobby Jackson hits off the block for the Sacramento Kings. Well, Bobby Jackson, what a luxury it was to land him after they lost Tony Delk to free agency. They didn't want to give Tony Delk a six-year contract, but Bobby has come in, not the scorer that Delk is, but a high-energy defensive player that's really helped their defense improve. A difference of three seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. Terry fights for his shot over Weber. Tap back up and no good by Wright. Reeled in by Barry. Just a few seconds remaining. And he'll hold it. And that's the way the first quarter will come to a close. End of the, quarter. the Sacramento Kings have won four consecutive games. And you can see that Weber is leading them with six. But Matt Maloney put in six. An unlikely source of Atlanta scoring. At the end of one. From Atlanta, we are tied at 21 apiece. Centennial Park, and welcome back to TBS NBA Tuesday from Atlanta. It's the first place and league best Sacramento Kings tied with the Atlanta Hawks at 21 
a piece. Defense is key, but the bench remains even maybe even more of a component of the Sacramento success. Well, you see Bobby Jackson there. He's really added to their defense. You see he does a good job here at the end of the quarter defending Jason Terry, contesting his jump shot, making it very difficult, and then coming in here, pushing Medela out of the way and finishing the defense with a great rebound. The Kings out there with Pollard, Christie, Jackson facing some full court with Maloney and Medela right there. Pollard, Jackson, Christie, Weber along with John Berry out there for the Kings who are beginning the first of four games on the East Coast. They'll go to Charlotte. After this, up to Boston. And begin tonight in Atlanta. Here comes Weber driving on Lorenzen right. Has his way. Tapped up and in by Pollard inside the lane. One of those bench guys we're talking about. Well, it, it, exactly. And, and also, the Hawks have to keep him off the boards. You know, he's too good. He goes to the basket. He shoots. Pushes the man under. You've got to put contact on uh, Weber, especially, and not let him get a second effort. Renzen right out there with Medela, the rookie, Maloney, DeMar Johnson, and Larry Robinson. Here yeah. comes Bobby Jackson, who played for the Timberwolves a season ago. Well, you know, speaking of Pollard again, I mean, he's really found a role. He was a player that was cut by this Atlanta team. Did not work out in Detroit as a first-round draft pick, and he's really found a niche here in Sacramento, just rebounding and defending, playing with energy, and wearing the Sam Samurai. Is that what we got? Samurai Sam Scott. <laughs> That is the second three knocked down tonight by the Kings. And their lead blossoms to five. Their biggest lead tonight, 26 to 21. Medela, seductive fake as he feeds now to Robinson, who leans in, makes the shot, was fouled on the play. Robinson will go to the line. Let's send it over to Craig Sager. Order. He is now sitting on the sidelines with an ice pack. Now the ice is there to reduce the swelling and to relieve the pain, but it has started to swell again and cause him some discomfort. John Barry at the other end. Now well, that was pretty easy, guys. Well, it's just a breakdown. I mean, you've got to count, at least count the players out on the floor. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this guy standing back here by himself, and they just step out and just pass it to him. Pretty Hawk. darn good pass, though, by Weber. A very good pass. Hawks are shooting 35%. Medela misses right there. A sixth rebound pulled down by Weber. And Christie swithers a pass inside, and Weber catches it, but quickly faces a double team. Got Medela to lean into him with a nice deceptive fake. And Medela, the rookie who played for Rick Majerus in Utah, picks up his first personal foul. Medela is the second best finished player to ever play in the NBA. A teammate of mine in college, Timo Saralainen, drafted by the Lakers. Lakers played some exhibition right, yeah. games. Played some exhibition games, didn't they cut him? Yeah, yeah this he guy's played. the second best of those who have been cut. Well, this guy. Hey, Timo would make it today. If he was drafted by the Hawks, he'd be starting. <laughs> Weber at the free throw line. Just to finish up on this young player, uh, Medela, he is the first Finnish native to play a regular season NBA game. Born and raised in Helsinki. Four years with the uh, Utah Utes. We'll see. That's, you know, BYU, Utah. You know, now you know why I said Timo was the best. <laughs> it never stops, does it, John? It never <laughs> it stops. Just to continue. It's just like a tide. <laughs> Maloney. And he gets it out to Larry Robinson with a three. Hit the last one. Missing that one. Rebounded by Pollard. And Jackson out there. Tocorlu is there. And he gets the pass. Weber watching. And Weber gets the pass from him. John Barry on the perimeter. Pollard plows inside. And he is called for a travel. Uh, that's not the strength of his game to go to the ball. He keeps running to the block asking for the ball. That's the first time they passed it to him. Maybe that's why. He's better off the ball, rebounding, slashing, doing all the things, getting garbage points. Here's Matt Maloney, who's played last year with Chicago, but began his career in the CBA. His dad was a college coach. Him inside Matumbo. Back in the game, missing the shot, and he was at point blank range. Well, he should have made that, and he knows that. That's why he was a little disgusted, because he back piled up and then extended his long reach over there. And Weber fanning from outside. Robinson corrals the loose ball. Kings are shooting 46%. Hawks 33% in this game. Rebounding advantage of the Kings. 22 to 12. A 10 rebound advantage. Maloney. Metalov. Rebound by Weber. 
So that's one thing Medela can do. He can step out and knock that jump shot down. They really like his future. They think he's going to be a nice role player for many years in this league with 6'11 and shooting jumpers. Pollard misses once, blocked the second time by Matumbo, blocked the third time inside to Kembe Matumbo. It's a one-man fortress. No, I don't think you want to take that shot in his face right in the lane like that. <laughs> no one said Pollard was a brain surgeon. <laughs> hey, he went to KU. That's a very fun. That's the Harvard of the Midwest. Jackson launching and knocking it in from two. And that explains it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. He <laughs> says. He says. Hey. He just yelled at the coach. Yeah, hey, I got a lot of heart. I got a lot of heart. He says brains. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful display inside by Dikembe Mutombo. There's one. Three for a quarter coming up right here. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> Let me try it again. Nope. <laughs> there is no way around him. Great start here, rebounding the basketball, but a lot of it has to do with just all the perimeter jumpers that the Hawks are missing right now. They're doing them a favor. Weber's been very significant with the rebounding tonight. He has six with his six points. 8-19 to play. Sacramento has not won in Atlanta since 1988. And the Hawks come in having lost three consecutive games. This is a team which began the season 0-7. The slowest start in franchise history. The Kings with their best start in franchise history. Coming in tonight 14-4. Kevin Harlan with Hall of Fame coach John Thompson, NBA champion and all-star Danny Ainge, and Craig Sager. The Emmy Award winning reporter and a nice spinning shot by Henderson back in the game. Slight separated shoulder and all. Looked pretty good for separated shoulder right there. <laughs> That's a way to come back in the game too. You serve notice that I'm back. John Barry picked up by Terry. Lawrence Funderburk in the game for the first time. Jousting inside with both Henderson and Matumbo. Jackson for three. Rebounded by Jimmy Jackson. Well, he just saw Dikembe swat three away in a row, so he was a little bit intimidated, kicked it out to Jackson, which is not his strength. Well, that's why I wondered why he penetrated. I thought he would have taken the turnaround jumper, but when Dikembe's in the second line of defense, you know, you're going to have trouble spending the effort on your man and then have to go to him. Nice rebound by Pollard. Jackson quick to trigger outside for John Barry. Wilson Williams is on the bench, as is Weber. Thunderbird takes it inside, slides by Henderson, hits the deck hard. Matumbo reels in the loose ball. And now Atlanta has a four on three, finding Henderson is Maloney. Henderson inside and can't get it to go with a foul call. You know, it was interesting, Kevin. You talked about Atlanta's slow start. With Dikembe being out, Danny, you can really see the significance of them starting slow because he does so much in blocking shots and rebounding and getting their transition offense going. To be able to start a season being a new coach without somebody like that is a very difficult thing. Well, I agree. I mean, Dikembe is so important to this team. If he's playing like he did last year, you know, where he led the league in rebounding, second in shot blocking, second in field goal percentage, you know, the guy is a great player. That's why there's a lot of teams right now calling Babcock daily, finding out what the story is. And I believe that he will end up somewhere else eventually. Well, what kind of names, Danny, do you hear? You've done a lot of research into this over the last couple days. Yeah, and I, I agree with what Coach said and what David Falk said, that there, there's not a lot of validity to the rumors that I heard. And, and uh, that's what I found out through the research and the people I talked with. Corlew drives on Jackson, finds his swat, one too many steps, one too many fakes, and he's called for the trample. Well, let me tell you something. There are very few things that I agree with Danny Ainge about, but I really like this kid to Corlew. I mean, he reads Danny extremely well, doesn't he? He knows who's guarding him. He knows when to stop. He does a lot of good things out there. He's smart. He's athletic. He's a typical European player. He can shoot, dribble, pass. He knows how to play the game. He's 21 years old. Yeah. He was drafted in the first round, and he can foul, like right there. <laughs> And he can complain and argue <laughs> with the officials. That's why I really like him. <laughs> In Turkish. <laughs> he picks up his first of the game. Kings on the road come in four and three. And the Hawks are three and six at home. And tomorrow night, the San Antonio Spurs on TNT will take on the Sons of Phoenix, followed by the Lakers and Blazers. Wonderful action, all beginning with inside the NBA. That's tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on TNT. Two great games, Ooh, by the man. way. Suns and Spurs is going to be a great game. Lakers and Blazers. 
should be a spectacular game. And then we've got a good one Thursday. This group will be up in Toronto for the Raptors. And the next Thursday, Maloney with the steal. Terry with the follow. Flying in for two. Jason Terry's always played. I watched him play four years at Arizona. He's always played with that kind of energy. The crowd loves him. Got those high knee socks and the headband. He's a, he's a showman out there. Plays with a lot of passion. Well, and he had a great defensive reputation. I was kidding him today, Danny, about his defensive reputation. He told me he liked his offensive reputation a lot better this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, was scoring, he was scoring most of those points when uh, Jimmy Jackson was out. It's be interesting to see if he can get the same amount of shots and get the same kind of rhythm with Jackson back in the game. Thunderbird at the other end just gave the Kings a two-point lead. Here's Jackson to Corlew. And Jackson trying to drive and does, chiseling his way up. If they whistle on a foul called on the Kings. I think Takorlu picked up another one. That's a second on Takorlu. You can see the fast break. Terry puts it in. The Hawks are staying right with the best team record-wise in the NBA. Here, this bud's for you. And by AutoZone. The right part, the right price, and good advice. And coming up on New Year's Eve, it's the annual New Year's Comedy Cure on the Superstation. 48 hours of the funniest movies on television. Beginning Sunday morning, December 31st on TBS. A couple times tonight, we have referred to the Kings as the best team record-wise in the NBA, and that's exactly where they are. Percentage points on top of both Utah and the Philadelphia 76ers. And Danny at home, they're a glittering 10-1. They're a great team at home. They have one of the best crowds in basketball. They play with a lot of emotion and excitement, and, and now they're playing that great defense that we've talked about all night. But on the road last year, they really struggled, and they're going to have to prove to become a better road team to, to compete with the better teams in the league. And Stojakovic is out. He's got a bruise in the top right portion of his shoulder. And Peja now missing another game this is the third one in a row they think the kings do that this road trip which will include stops at charlotte boston and new jersey well at least it's somewhat of a litmus test because on the road they have not played in los angeles against the lakers they have not played in portland against the blazers nor in salt lake against the utah Jazz. i'll tell you what that'll tell you how good you are yeah <laughs> i'll tell you when you play those three teams and, and you know you've got to say the lakers are the best team in basketball and tell somebody dethrones them i mean they've proven that last year on the court and they had it still the champions until somebody beat them lakers are 15 and 7. And they play tonight at home against Milwaukee. Driving is Jackson, sets a shot into Maloney, and throws up air. Jackson oh, thought he was, in fact, nicked yeah, when he well, threw well, it up. I tell you what, I would think I was nicked, too, if I shot an air ball, and my <laughs> coach is watching me, and I'm coming off the bench. It's time to fuss at the official and blame it on him. Kings with Barry, Thunderbird, Devox is in with Christie and Jackson. And the miss shot. Rebound by Divatz. The Hawks out there with Terry Maloney, Jackson, Henderson, and Matumbo. Lonnie Divatz, the ex-Los Angeles Lake. We're just talking about Los Angeles. Thunderbird had it torn away by Jackson. And here comes a healthy Jimmy Jackson. This last eight games that they sprained MCL. Dancing into Christie. Dishes outside to Henderson, and he can't make it work. The Atlanta Hawks are shooting 31% from the field. And you see, just what I was talking about with Jason Terry not getting the same amount of looks and opportunities to be aggressive, Jimmy Jackson's had three or four isolation plays where, where Jason hasn't touched the ball. When Jimmy Jackson's not in the game, Jason Terry gets a lot more of those opportunities himself. Well, I think Jimmy Jackson, as you indicated, he's a guy that can handle the basketball. Right now, the Hawks have three guys that if the ball outlet goes to him, can bring the ball down. I like Jason Terry. He's got a nice throw. I love the guy. He plays with a lot of energy. You know, he just loves to play out there. He loves anybody that's been given the green light to shoot the ball. No question. <laughs> nice pass from John Barry. Thunderbird had it rejected by Henderson. It's Maloney with Terry, a four on three. Jackson inside, can't get it to go, and a whistle. Well, see, and Kevin, that's, that's the advantage of watching that. If you come down at that time, they could fill the lanes with somebody like Jimmy or fill the lanes with Jason. Whoever gets the ball on this team is very capable. This is a heck of a pass by John Barry, although there's a terrible breakdown in defense with the Atlanta Hawks. But you know what? You got a seven foot four guy that can cover up for it. He, he set that block up by Henderson by just being there. He's not seven four. 
seven two. He's seven about seven <laughs> five but tonight. He's seven five. He's got lips in those shoes with all the shots he's blocking. Devox picked up the foul. There's Jackson at the free throw line. Jimmy Jackson has been all over the globe. He really has. He's played all over the place. He's been traded four times. He's played for six different teams in his eight NBA seasons. And he's always been able to score with 26 points a game one year in Dallas. He's, he knows how to get the ball in the basket. Williams is back in now for the Sacramento Kings with Barry Devots Christie and Thunderbird has it. Thunderbird is two of three, grinding on Henderson, driving inside in a whistle. And the foul called on Jimmy Jackson, who last year played in Portland. Well, the official, the, the Hawks are not happy because the official all the way across the court out here at half court made that call with the two officials on the ball side, couldn't see it. Devac is trying to tell the official that Dikembe is not guarding it. Dikembe is hanging back in the lane, but the best way to solve that is to hit that outside shot and force him to come out there. Jason Terry on the perimeter was uh, tailing John Barry. And that's the second on Terry, if you take a look at John Barry from the famous uh, NBA playing Barry family. His brother Brent up in Seattle, his dad Rick is in the Hall of Fame, and they love him here. Inside Weber, back in the game, twisting it right off the bat, his presence is felt, his second two-handed jam inside. He's got eight points. It looked like he did that on cruise control. He just took his time back then. He just went over him and dunked it. Terry inside. Off balance, contorting. He's hit from every angle tonight. He's gone four of eight. He's got ten points. I like watching Terry. He's out of Arizona. That team won the final four one year when he was there. And I like him too, Kevin. I think what is very important in his new offensive role, he's got to retain his defensive intensity, and he'll be a heck of a player. And a loose ball foul called on John Barry. John's not happy, but that would have been a 15-yard penalty in football below the crack back and below the waist. A little incidental contact. A little incidental contact. <laughs> that was a pretty good play right there. Yeah, yeah. He'd fit into the Ravens defense. <laughs> yeah. You see right here, the loose ball go. He tries to act like it's not intentional, but he's riding him right underneath <laughs> trying to take him out. And he runs him out of bounds. Have you ever fouled anyone and acted like it was intentional? No, you got you to gotta act <laughs> like it didn't. Show. Yeah. <laughs> he knows the game. He watched his dad play. He's been around. John Barry has been a part of six teams over eight seasons. He's been all over the NBA map as well. And he hasn't been healthy, and he just had a second little baby this boy. past week baby boy, boy yeah. and uh, so he's been a little bit distracted the past week but uh, congratulations to John Barry and his wife hey when you guys were here and Michelle were having babies you weren't distracted you to jack up 30 shots a game it didn't stop your game it was my excuse not to have to get up <laughs> with the baby at night <laughs> there's another miss by Barry by the way Danny's wife is with us tonight here in Atlanta we go to Toronto as you said where Danny used to play baseball for the Blue Jays Terry, Jackson, inside to Henderson, bad shoulder and all, up inside onto Weber. Devots gets the rebound. Atlanta is leading Sacramento, and Christie throws it away. Another Kings turnover. They've got 10, but just two by the Atlanta Hawks. And a timeout taken at Phillips Arena. Holiday greetings. Way 14 and 8 is their record. They've won three consecutive games. Tonight, they take on first place Cleveland, and they've won three in a row. And these, I love these teams. You don't hear about Cleveland and Dallas uh, all rising now and becoming forces within their divisions. Well, Dallas, you know, they got off to a great start. Their new owner, all this new excitement. They sign all these free agents. They buy draft picks. And, you know, I think they've just created excitement. You wonder how long this is going to last. With all that excitement, pretty soon it's going to have to just be raw talent. But they're definitely a team with high expectations. Jimmy Jackson now has 11. And a second personal foul was put on Christie. And here now the small forward for the Atlanta Hawks, Jimmy Jackson. Well, and, and that gives them a, a lot of versatility, too. And particularly on a break, as, as Lon said, he wanted to get out. But as you saw him now, he went inside, he posted. He can do a lot of things out there. I think you add Jackson, you add, you add Matombo out there who's healthy. It gives you a whole different look for this Atlanta team. Christie inside trying to drive. Jackson was there and a whistle and a foul blown on Jimmy Jackson. It's the best way to slow down a hot offensive player is go at him on the other end. And uh, Doug Christie 
taking him in the post. They like to post Doug Christie a lot. We saw Lon Kruger a second ago. Kruger back in 1974 after playing for Jack Hartman, the late Jack Hartman at Kansas State, was actually drafted by the Atlanta Hawks. Also, uh, we had a trial with the Dallas Cowboys. They thought so much of his athletic ability, and there's a foul called. And that's on Matt Maloney. Lon Kruger, we, we spent a lot of time with him today. He left the University of Illinois and left that team loaded in the Big Ten. He took Florida to a Final Four when he was down in Gainesville. But you could sense today in visiting with him that this is still a very new game to him as he tries to adapt to the personalities and the, the rigmarole that is involved in the NBA. Well, and I think he indicated that to us, that there is a certain bit of an adaptation that he's got, he's got to make. But the thing that I was extremely impre impressed with is that he still had a lot of hope for this team. He still thinks that this team potentially can become something. He was extremely impressed with the cooperation of the players, too. John Berry's free throw, one of the free throws, was good. At the other end, missed the first. Williams popping a three and banking it home. He's not down two threes tonight. He's got six. And the Kings right back in it, down by two. Well, just as I started to say that he was shooting the ball too quick, <laughs> he shoots up a prayer and gets a bank from the front. And then Maloney knocks in a two-point shot to give the Hawks another four-point lead again. Christie across the lane finds Tebots. The reverse town! Avlade is such a skilled basketball player. They really need his offense to pick up if they're going to be an elite team in this league as well. Chris Weber's not going to be able to do it for 82 games. And right here, you see the great penetration right here by Doug Christie, who's been very aggressive going to the basket. Great finish around the seven foot eight shot blocker. <laughs> He's growing as we're going. <laughs> but He's got to do it too many times. <laughs> you know, just having Matumbo win there is why Lon Kruger can get away with playing these three guards. He covers up from defensively, and they have a big advantage in shooting the ball and quickness on the perimeter against Sacramento. Matumbo picked up the foul. Remember the offensive rebound and slams it in. Right over to Kembe. Well, and, you know, and I agree with what you said about Divac. He's got to become more aggressive, Danny, in this team. And I don't know why he's playing the way he's playing now, but he has too many skills to be as passive as he's playing, particularly Jason. offensively. Jason Terry knifes his way in for two. And that's what the Atlanta Hawks lead by right now, 46 to 44. Terry's got 14 points in the game and 10 have come in the second quarter. And here they go again. Larry Robinson twirling into Jason Williams. And a foul called on Jason Williams. And we've been talking about Jason right there, and he just uses his quickness against the taller Doug Christie, beats him to the basket, no weak side. Here, Dikembe just thinks he's so big he doesn't have to block out anymore. Weber just jumps over the back of him. Very patient inside. Easy two points for Weber. Great energy. Out the free throw line is Larry Robinson. Here is one of the great stories in the NBA. A long shot to make this team. He has worn six different NBA uniforms. He's played for four different teams in the CBA. He spent one season in the IBL, one season in the WBL. He's played in three foreign countries. He played for two different colleges. I mean, you love to see guys like that finally make it and stick. Oh, you love it. And, you know, he's played with six different NBA teams, but he's only played like 50 total games. Right. So he's had to fight for everything. And it's great to see him finally succeed and make this roster. Johnny's got five points that have come all in this quarter. Well, but the thing that's impressive about him is the fact that he's not humble. I mean, every time he's gotten the ball, he's looked offensively to be creative. He didn't come in here with an apologetic kind of attitude, and that's the thing that will help him to stay here. And you can see coming up on the AT&T Halftime Report, take your eyes to that bottom line there. Trouble in Denver. What's going on out there? Yeah, just what I read on the Internet today. I don't know exactly what all the details are, but that's amazing if that's true that those guys boycotted. Boycotted a shooter. Right? Yes. Ernie and Kenny will have that, and Peter Vesey is there, and Denver has lost four consecutive games. They're 10 and 12, and I kind of like their team. It's one of their best starts in a handful of seasons, and you would think that Dan Issel, who played so many years in the NBA, would have a handle on things, but obviously there's more to that story, and you'll find out in about a half minute from now in our studios in Atlanta. We did kick those guys out of here, by the way. They were in our seats before the game. Gone, baby. <laughs> 88 and out the gate, and it's 48-46. The Hawks by two, and foul called as Christie is trying to defend. And picks up his third as you take a look at Rick Adelman. Rick Adelman played in the NBA for a number of years with the old Kansas City Kings, and now he's coaching the Sacramento Kings. Kansas City Kings moved to Sacramento back in the 
Mid 80s. You know who the last broadcaster was in Kansas City? It was Terry at the first time. You know, two of their broadcasters are in this building. Two of their former broadcasters are in this building. One of them was you? One of them was me. <laughs> was my first job out of college was doing the Kings. And Craig Sager, before he went to uh, Turner Sports from CNN, was a broadcaster with the Kings. Yeah, and then this young hot shot from KU comes in, <laughs> offers to work for less money than me, and I had to Boy, go I ship out. This is getting personal, Danny. <laughs> this is getting real you personal. Thought you and Angel. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm glad you guys are sitting near each other. <laughs> no, it was amicable. Uh, no, he left. He, we went for the big time contract. Right? But I was in there, and that was a lot of fun. Here comes Williams. Final uh, 10 seconds now of this first half. Williams will dance on Terry and his behind the back pass. Ricochets off of Terry's knee. 7.3 on the big clock and six seconds on the shot clock. That's one thing Jason's going to have to learn to do better, I think, is be a better offensive pick and roll player. He's not patient enough. He tries to be a little bit too fancy. Williams to Barry, and the three won't go. Matumbo grabs the loose ball. And the Hawks are going to go to halftime with the lead. Atlanta has beaten Sacramento nine consecutive games. Sacramento has not won in Atlanta since 1988. And Lon Kruger looking for the upset as the Kings come into tonight with percentage-wise, record-wise, the best record in the NBA. Let's send it over to Craig Sager. Well, Jason, the word before the game. Will Jason Terry get his points now that Jimmy Jackson's back? You're still aggressive. 16 points, 9 shots. Going well. Still aggressive. I mean, I'm not really getting it in a half-court set. I'm getting it in transition. You know, just trying to do the little things. I'm trying to get Jimmy some easy shots so he doesn't have to work too hard. Danny Ainge can't figure out. Are you a one-guard or a two-guard? I play basketball. That's exactly what he said, Kevin. They drafted him as a point guard, as a matter of fact, but he's playing the two right now. And because of his play and a very nice job by the Atlanta Hawks, Ernie Johnson, it's Atlanta 50 and Sacramento 46 as we send it to you. All right, thank you, Kevin. And it is uh, good to be back here in Studio A, Ernie Johnson and Kenny Smith. Tuesday, Sacramento and the Atlanta Hawks. And the Kings come in with the best record in the NBA into tonight. Now it's time for the TBS TNT Million Dollar Shot presented by Budget rent -A -Car. And tonight's two contestants were Michael Sobel and Chad McIntyre, each with a 60-second first round to make as many $100 shots as possible. McIntyre made five. And this year, that winner has the choice of three different shots with different rewards. And as always, John Thompson on board for guidance. Now, you have an opportunity to go for the million, or you can be safe and get a lot of Christmas presents by getting up to the top and knocking in that short. <laughs> and here it was. And just missing the anguish in John Thompson. But then who is this over his shoulder trying to get more air time? <laughs> it's Danny Ainge. You're a pub hound is what you are. <laughs> uh, before we talk to us, let's go to uh, Craig Sager. Who moments ago, chatted with Juan Gruber. Well, Coach, you have a four-point lead against the team with the best record in basketball. How do you think your team played? Well, I thought we took good care of the ball. You know, I thought we got uh, some good looks, uh, you know, each time down. Uh, didn't finish the looks that we got. Uh, got to do a better job transition defensively. Sacramento uh, really runs out effectively, and uh, they, they're comfortable at that pace. Only three turnovers against the team. Is that surprising? Well, I think any time you, you'll take three turnovers in a half. It's surprising, perhaps, but i uh, like to like that to become the norm. But uh, the guy did take good care of the ball, and again, had good looks. Right, thanks for luck in the second half. Well, turnovers, obviously, John, just killing Sacramento. Well, very definitely so, and, and as he said, anytime you get three turnovers in any kind of game, you're in a good position, but I also feel that the transition baskets attest to the fact that they are going to shoot a higher percentage because they've got to get out and run. What's on your mind, Danny? Oh, the free throws. They got to the free throw line in Atlanta. They didn't shoot the ball very well. They were out-rebounded, only shot 38%, but they outscored them by 10 at the free throw line. That was the difference. Jason Terry was outstanding in that first half, and in the second quarter in particular, he was all over the floor with slashing moves like that, and then tip-ins like this, and then he was hitting some outside shots in addition to more slashing inside. He had 12 points in that second quarter. In fact, he began with outside shots and then converted in the second quarter to some inside moves. I love that kid. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's got a ton of energy, plays hard. He can shoot. He can defend. They have him playing six foot nine. Turkoglu, uh, he just does a little bit of everything out there. Here come the Kings out there with Christy, Weber, Williams, Divac, and Turkoglu. But I think Jason's quickness is so obvious in this game. Yes. <laughs> 
Fresh legs, young legs. You know, the thing that puzzles me, though, Danny, I look at this stat sheet, and they have to come in for three block shots. You're pointing to it, too. Yeah, he and, had at least five. And he, and he had three on one man. Yeah. It, 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 on one play, and, and your home statistician gives you three, you're in trouble. That's terrible. And well, they happen so fast, maybe he counted them as one and a half. Maybe he can't count at all. <laughs> like a machine gun. Maloney, Matumbo, Henderson, Jackson, and Terry, the Hawks five as they begin the second half. Devils. Shot clock is at two for Williams for three. Rebound chased down by Dikembe Mutombo. Well, and that's the good thing about Dikembe's rebound. And not only does he go up, he goes laterally to rebound. I mean, he hustles to get rebounds. It's not just a question of jumping. He really doesn't jump that high. He's long, but he does go uh, north and south, east and west for rebound. Henderson snuck right by Weber. That's an understatement. That was like Chris Weber's move right there. Put it on the floor. Weber's feet were stuck in cement that time. <laughs> Devonson Matumbo, the feed Corlu, and he can't get it. Rebound by the Kembe. Good pass by Vlade, though. <laughs> the long arm of the law was there. That's why he wasn't <laughs> able to get it. Jackson tries to whittle his way inside. Henderson to Maloney to Terry. Shot clock at 10. A Matumbo screen as Christie is knocked to stride and Terry converts and exploits the wonderful screen by Dikembe Mutombo. And he was so patient. He came off one time. That's very difficult to teach young players to be that kind of patient. I think if Jason Williams was that patient, he'd get a lot more of those medium-range jump shots. Hawks have their biggest lead tonight. Eight points, Williams to Weber. And Williams set a double screen. Rebound by Dikembe Mutombo again. Terry racing the other way. The screen by Henderson. He hits again! He's on fire! Jason <laughs> Terry's been magnificent! He looks over here at Danny Ainge and shakes his head and smiles. I can score is what he said. They can't guard me. Timeout. Protest of Coach Dan Issel. That guy James Posey, right in the middle of all that, never came to pass. There was a misunderstanding. We're going to talk more about that at halftime. We talked we talk about it at halftime. More on Inside the NBA just a bit later. But there's certainly a lot of basketball still to be played. Back to Kevin and the whole Hee Haw gang. <laughs> Thanks. I know there was no insurrection at Georgetown, nor with Danny at Phoenix when you guys were your coaching uh, bests. Inside. Oh, the LU pass. Bloody Divats to a high-flying Chris Weber. And that Sacramento field goal breaks an over three-minute drought dating back to the second quarter. And they could credit that to Rick Adelman. Good draw at the timeout. He realized they needed a basket to get some momentum back. No better way than to throw the dunk. Well, one of the things the Atlanta guys were saying was to defend the pass. You know, during practice, had they defended that pass, Vladi would not have been able to throw it. But Dikembe is so far away that Vladi throws an excellent pass right there to Chris Webber. Well, to even say it better, Dikembe is illegal. He's been illegal all night. <laughs> Devons has led NBA centers three times in his career in assists. Jimmy Jackson. And Jackson tonight in a starting role after missing eight games. Gets the three. He's got 14 points. And the lead is 11 for the Atlanta Hawks. Their biggest tonight. Christie, nice feed to Corlew, was there uncovered, untouched. That was a spectacular pass, but they didn't even look at Turkoglu out there posting up on Jason Terry. And that's exactly what Lon Kruger wanted to do. Take him out of what they'd normally like to do and post Turkoglu. They're not used to doing that. Atlanta has hit all four of their shots to begin the second half. It's Matumbo and Divots with the grind and the interception made by Jason Williams. Four Atlanta turnovers. Sacramento's in double digits. The miss by Williams. Nice rebound by Weber. Henderson there. See, Atlanta's done a good job, but they've got to take care of the ball and maintain their concentration now. Ronnie Divots, whose shooting has been suspect only 42% this year. Knocks it in from outside. Boy, you have a center with that kind of range on his shot can do so much for him. It makes a big difference, and I love the kid. He looks over at the coaches and say, what should I do? And they say, well, guard you. Well, and, and it's really even more significant with Vladi taking that shot with a shot blocker guarding him. Because yes. that shot blocker has got to come out of the lane and can no longer play a zone back in the back. Jason Williams has knocked down three triples tonight. And now the emotion and the passion that is so much a part of his game beginning to emerge and the Kings to within four. 
Well, he's such an emotional player, but let's see if that emotion translates into the defensive end where he can try to stop down Jason Terry. <laughs> he's on fire, and the Kings are back in the hunt. Shot has been falling for him. Danny, he's only shooting 23% from above the arc this season. And he hasn't shot that many of them. You know, tonight is what he's attempted. You can see three per game. Last year, 6.3. But one thing we don't see there, two-point shooting, 58%. He leads all NBA guards in two-point shooting. He's been much more selective until tonight. He has pretty misses. I like his miss. <laughs> misses in style. Anderson bumping into Williams, knocked away on the play and picked up by Christie. Jacorlu, three on two, and outside, Jason Williams for three, and ten! Right down the middle! Now that's a good shot because it's in transition, there's defensive rebounding balance. Jason just got a technical, I think, for taunting. He's getting a little bit too excited, he feels like he's on fire right now. They're trying to cool him down over there, tapping. I mean, you gotta get fired up a little bit in this game. I mean, heck, we're not in church on Sunday. Boy, is he having fun. Is he having fun. But he's like he's like acting like the crowd is doing something to him. The crowd isn't saying anything. They're and, and not talking and, to him. And, and you're right. And really, if you look at that, he might be looking up in the stands past uh, Terry. He's not looking directly at Terry. Who is he talking to? The crowd? Yeah, he's like talking to the person in the upper, <laughs> in the upper deck. <laughs> Thinking they're taunting him. But, See, the, but the thing also, about it is, you know, he made the steal. You know, so that's not a bad shot in that situation, and I like it. If his energy turns to defensive energy, then I like it. Well, and if he can control his energy. I, I like the way he plays, but you don't want to homogenize his kid too much. You know, he's an upbeat player. He's a flashy player. He's a player that people like to see play. Certainly coaches want to confine him a little bit, but you can't do it too much. And I don't believe in confining him. I just want him to play defense. That's all. Play with the same kind of passion as he does on offense, on defense. That'll never happen. Now <laughs> Sacramento beginning to turn their defensive screws. Terry knocks it away from Williams. Three on one. Terry the pump, the drive. Henderson. Well, and I like that because he went to the big man, Danny. He knows he gets the rebounds for it on the break. And he looks like a point guard on that play. Atlanta's biggest lead to 9-11 points. Sacramento is on a 10-3 run. Devon Street checked it by Dikembe Mutombo. We've got him for six. They've got him for four. Nonetheless, he's been great. Terry Jackson for three. Rebound by Christie. I tell you, this game that is starting to become wide open. It's becoming an early offense and transition game. And, and, and Sacramento loves to play that way. And obviously, Atlanta is learning to adjust to it. Williams for three again, clanks that off, here comes Terry, working on Christie and waiting for his uh, teammates to arrive, the crossover on Christie, intercepted by Williams to Corlew, one on three. Well, that was a good defensive play by Jason, too, because he rotated from the guard position to the backside and picked off, off that pass. Atlanta has seven turnovers in the game, four in this quarter. And illegal defense is the call. Well, Jason Terry with long arms and great speed just catches Jason. Not very many people can catch him from behind, but great finish right there. And Dikembe, you see, he gets beat off the dribble by Vlade, but recovers for his sixth block. But they're trying to protect that incentive clause in his contract. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you something. And in protecting that incentive clause, they're going to lose him because all of those owners that walk behind the bench and shake his hands before a game carry statisticians with them that know how to count block shots. <laughs> Free throw is in, so it's 62-59. That was taken because of the illegal defense. Now the subsequent possession by Sacramento, halfway through the third quarter. A Christie pass, retrieved by Divots. Shot clock at three and a whistle. You know, they're illegal every time, and Jason Williams now is yelling for illegal defense. That's what Paul Silas got very angry at this past week for the illegal defense. If you got the rules right in front of you, they're illegal, call the illegal defense. Matumbo has three fouls. The lob, Divots to Corlu outside Williams. Slashing back out to Divots for two. Come on! And I love that play by Jason Williams right there. He missed his last three. He's been taking a lot of threes. Penetrates in and gets Vlade a wide open shot. And Vlade, Danny, is starting to become a lot more aggressive. And this is the old Vlade that we were talking about. He was very passive starting out. But when you've got a shot blocker guarding you and you take him outside, you've got to nail that shot or make a significant pass. That's the Atlanta turnover story moments ago. 
Vladdy Divac is averaging eight again a game, and he's got 10 points tonight. And right there, you saw Jason could have taken that shot wide open. He draws two defenders to him. Vlade has all day. Very good shooter from the top of the key. Weber just picked up a foul. And there's another call. It's inside. And that goes on Jimmy Jackson. And he's got four. Ooh, that's a big call right there. Jimmy creates a lot of havoc on the other end of the core. They need his offense in the game. Five and a half to play in the third. It goes inside to Corlew. Spinning on Terry. Good hesitation on Matumbo. Tapped up and in by Divac. I think we'll give him an assist on that one, too. <laughs> we'll give him an assist. And also, the, the defenders on Atlanta's team, when Dikembe comes over to block shots, they have to cover for him and attack his man. Maloney the miss. Aggressive rebound by Christie. The Kings out rebounding the Hawks by 10. Divac the other way. Christie is on top. And here's Weber over Henderson. Terry skies to get the ball. Kings lead by one. One of the rare leads they've had tonight. Jackson outside, and the Hawks back on top. That's that all forward position that they were talking about they needed filled, and he's doing a good job. When you think about him being out for eight games, Dikembe being out, uh, Lund really has a team now that he has not had before. 17 for Jackson. Great feed by Divac to the slashing Jason Williams. And it's a great cut by Jason. I don't see Jason cut like that. I see Stojakovic do a great job of that most games, but Jason can work off the ball. He's got great quickness and great range. He should be very difficult to guard once he throws the ball to Weber and, and Vlade. Henderson across the lane with the left hand won't go, and it's picked up by Weber. Both teams shooting in the 40s. 45% shooting for the Kings, 42% shooting for the Atlanta Hawks. Approaching four minutes to play here in the third quarter. Another illegal defense. Like I said, they could call it every time down the court if they want. I know the officials don't want to do that, but it's so obvious on the weak side Atlanta defense. The shooting the technical Here's the classic give and go moments ago. Well, it's a great pass, but it's a great cut. He's being overplayed. He just dives to the basket. It's wide open because... Divac and Weber are both outside, and they have to be honored by the defense. And the, and the thing about Divac and Weber is that both of them are extremely good passes. Not only are they scoring threats from the outside, but if you come out and play them, they'll pick you apart with their passes. A part of the scouting report today in Atlanta was to defend both of those guys' passes as well as defending their shots. And the Atlanta Hawks are getting lax in not doing that now. Good point. Here's Divac with Christie. Substitutions, Metal is now back in for Atlanta. Robinson is back in for the Hawks. Inside Divac, rejected by the rookie Metala in a whistle and a foul. See, I love that kind of basketball by Jason Williams, not just settling for the outside shot. Last year, he shot 60% of his shots from the three-point range, but right here, he attacks the basket, draws three or four defenders in there, finds Vlade wide open under the basket. Look at Jason Williams improving defensively this year as has the Sacramento team. The top five in rebounding, turnovers forced, and steals. That's why they come into tonight. One of the reasons why they come into tonight record-wise and percentage-wise with the best record in the NBA at 14-4. and four. Better than the Suns, the Spurs, Utah, Philadelphia, the Lakers, everybody. I still think the one weakness this team has is road basketball. And the other and the other uh, maybe is Jason Williams' defense. A lot of teams are going to make him play some defense. Devon's 14 points, 8 in this third quarter where he has shined. It's Lorenzen right in the game for the first time, second half. Terry hits Jackson, shot clock at 4. Terry missing the shot badly. And there's Jason Williams. Christie at the other end. What a great difference he has made on this team. He does so many things. You know, Nick Anderson's a terrific post-up player, but he's basically a post-up on occasion and just jack up threes. Christie does everything. He plays great defense. He handles the ball in transition. He penetrates. He defends. Second in the league in steals. Plus, he's shooting 40% threes as well. So, just a complete basketball player, and I think he's been the biggest difference in this team this year. That is the fourth illegal defense blown on the Atlanta Hawks, and Matumbo's not even out there. He's on the bench. Well, it's not just Matumbo. The whole weak side, they can't have more than one person down below the foul line, and they constantly have two. They could call it every time down the court if they wanted. Well, the difficult thing about that, Danny, and you're absolutely correct, is that they played the same kind of defense in the first part of the game, and it was not called. And now when you read the officials, which is a part of what you do as a player, that and they don't call it, it's difficult for Atlanta to make the adjustment, but they better make it now. 
Well, no question, because they've been called for four illegal defenses. But, you know, they get away with it night in and night out. And in one night, it's hard to make that adjustment. Jason Terry knocks it down. He has gone 8 of 13, 22 points for the second-year player, Terry, out of Arizona. Well, I tell you what, you don't know whether he's a one or two, but I agree with him. He's a guard. <laughs> he definitely is a guard. He's a player, and it's hard to guard Vladi Divac with plays like that. 16 points, he's doubled his season average. Well, and coming out of college, I thought he was the ideal third guard because he could play up either position, but he was a But I still think the best system for him to play, and he played with Mike Bibby at University of Arizona until his senior year. And you know, he just, he has so much energy. He does a little bit of everything. Shoot, shoot with distance, penetrate, pass, defend. That's Bobby Jackson, who I think got a knee on the side of his knee, just above his knee. And uh, let's watch it again. Well, he's been a factor on this team as well. Yeah, you know, they, when they lost Tony Delk, again, they didn't like to lose Tony Delk, but, you know, that was a big blow to them. But to be able to land Bobby Jackson with that same money, you know, he, he brings a different element than Delk, but terrific energy. Minnesota felt they could not retain him five seconds remaining because they signed Chauncey Billups. Right, deceptive move by Weber. Don't go, paddles up to Corlew is there. And I think Minnesota's happy with Chauncey Billups. Christie, wide open, three, go! Sacramento has been raining threes tonight. Six from above the arc, and they lead it 74-66. Their biggest lead tonight after Atlanta led by 11 points in the first half. Well, Atlanta had better be careful, particularly in their half-court sets. Wow. Oh. I'm saying be careful. He launches up a three, but they've got to make certain that they do get a good high percentage shot because the Kings love to go up and down the court, and when things are going their way, they can open up their margin in doing that. Well, the difference between this and the first half, they've only gone to the free throw line one time in this quarter after going 18 in the first half. Nice pass by Vladi. Christie reeled it in, and a shove inside with an Atlanta foul. It's on Larry Robinson, who just, by the way, hit a wonderful three at the other end, a distant relative to Robert All Parrish. The the and the one thing they do have in common, aside from that, is they both the played at center. Third on... Make it Terry. They're going to put it on Jason Terry, although Robinson was in there. They put it on Jason Terry. And here comes Doug Christie. He's at the free throw line. His defense has been contagious for this Kings team. It's hard. Uh, I mean, you just have to go out there and try. And that, that all comes from inside. Uh, you know, positioning, footwork, and all that stuff are, are disciplines that are learned. Whereas, you know, on, on defense, you just have to go out there and just give it all you got to, as much as you can. He's 30 years old. He defends. He does the dirty work. He brings great energy to this team. Terry trying to feed. There's Christie again with the steal. He's number two in the NBA in steals. And five! in for two at the other end. And see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. His versatility as a player leads the fast break like a point guard, very patient, makes a great decision in the transition. Well, the other thing that he did, Kevin, is that he used his intelligence. When he came to this team, he supplied them with the one ingredient that they needed. A lot of people try to compete with people who are already there. You know, he's defending hard because he fits in with this team. He, they need him as a defender. And talking about zoning, he's helping, and then he gets out on the break. But he does the dirty things. And he's number two, as you said before, number two in the NBA in steals coming into tonight. He's having a great game, 17 points, 10 have come in this quarter. He's averaging 11 a game, and here's Medela at the free throw line. Weber whacked him as he went inside, and Weber now has a couple fouls. Hano Medela. Here's a player with a very high upside, Dion Glover, who had a broken bone in his left foot, got it the first day of training camp. He missed 14 games that their hopes are very high for him as he takes the place of Jackson. Well, he was one of the great players to ever play in the state of Georgia. As Coach Kruger said today, a man among boys in the high school level, so he's a, a Georgia hero. He's been hurt for two years, hasn't been able to get it done, and they're very high hope, have high hopes for him after having a great summer league. And I heard Lon say that he was a man among boys, but they need him to be a man among men right now. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you something, the team record is 4-16. and 16, And if he's got a high upside, he's going to show up at a show it now. Jason Terry took a shot in the face by Doug Christie, and I think Christie was just defending, and it was very uh, uh, errant. There's nothing malicious about him whatsoever. That's the fourth on Christie as we send it over to Craig Sager. 
Well, when the Hawks got off to that 0-7 start, Jason Terry was looking for a source of motivation. He bought this book written by his idol, Gary Payton. Confidence Counts. He was reading it today for the sixth time. I talked to him before the game, and he pointed to me his favorite page. It says, I don't believe in failure. Failure is not in my vocabulary. If you work hard, do your best and lose. To me, that's not failure. You may get knocked down by a better team. Life's rough, you know, but everyone gets down, knocked down at some time. The test is to come back, stand up, and win the game. Kevin? Nice job, Craig. Thank you. Oh, another alley-oop with d throwing to Weber. Follow the scouting report, man. man. Defend the pass particularly when Weber and Divac has the ball. Half minute to play in the third. Lorenzen right. Glover trying to shimmy inside. Larry Robinson with the miss. Great catch by Wright in the subsequent two. Well, you know, that's his game right now. Larry Robinson is jacking up threes. They need to get to the free throw line like they did in the first half. But Lorenzen right, that's his game. He lives on the offensive boards. Kings have led by as many as nine. Up now by six. It's a half second difference between the game clock and the shot clock as we wind down our third. And it's a feed to Christie. Picked up by Wright. Off to Terry. Trying to beat the buzzer. Guys! Count it! It's a three! As the Hawks finish the third in a flurry. 27 points. 11 offered in the third quarter by Jason Terry. Well, Jason... Williams makes a mistake by shooting the ball way too early on the shot clock allows that I've seen those shots all the time You got to make sure you run that clock down to the end but Jason Terry look at he just crosses over shoots a normal jump shot from about 35 feet And the thing that's so impressive now, about him is his quickness. He's likened to Allen Iverson in transition. If you don't pick him up quickly, you've got a problem A bit of Georgia on a chilly Tuesday night on TBS NBA Tuesday Sacramento Kings and the Atlanta Hawks are bouncing off each other tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's budget rent a car fast break. And yeah, we have seen some fast break points tonight. Yeah, we've had some great fast break points tonight. We've seen a lot of perimeter shots and a lot of rebounds to start those fast breaks. Craig, what do you have? Oh, well, we saw Bobby Jackson run into one of the Hawks players. The word is now he did suffer a left thigh contusion and he will not return. That'll affect them. They rely a lot on that bench. Oh, they do. And right now, it'll be interesting to see if Atlanta can get some scoring with Jimmy Jackson and Jason Terry both out of the game. There's Deion Glover out there with uh, Maloney, Henderson, Matumbo, and Larry Robinson. It's Henderson driving inside. Scott Powered has come back in the game for the Kings with Barry Williams, Weber, and to Corley. <laughs> you know, Danny, I was listening to Craig say the left thigh contusion. Whatever happened to a bump on the knee? Kind of face the a sore foot. What just happened? Official called a foul. An offensive foul on Henderson, Danny, at the other end. And the other officials overruled. They called it an offensive foul. That is so frustrating as a player like that, because that could have been called either way. Atlanta had a big lead of 11, 59 to 48. Driving inside, Williams picked up by Matumbo. That's what you call altering a shot without <laughs> moving. Respect is what it is. You know, this is a pattern of Atlantis, you know, to play hard and come down to the end. But they're 0-16 in games when they're trailing going into the fourth quarter. It's not a good mark. Henderson taking it inside, and a whistle is blown. As you take a look at Jason Terry, he has combined over the last couple games for 59 points. Again, this guy... Well, and this could be the start that they're looking for Kevin here in Atlanta. And one of the things I love about him is his transition speed. He's got the kind of speed that it makes it very difficult to get back and to pick him up. And he's such a good pull-up jump shooter. And mixing that with his drive, it makes it almost impossible to guard him in transition. And then on top of that, he has great character, great work ethic. He's one of the excellent young pieces in the league that Atlanta has to build around. I think you were just talking, John, about Iverson switching from a point guard to a two. Well, switching from a point guard to a two, transition speed, and I agree with Danny. Sometimes we spend too much time trying to define what these guys are rather than watching them play and letting them play the position. Yeah, Allen Iverson, Eric Snow goes down the other night, he scores 30, gives up 10 assists in, in the point guard position, so just let's, let's just call them basketball players and forget the labels. Let's well, right, Isaiah Thomas at Indiana, and you say, shoot first, pass second. 
I, or I, unless I you play for him. Or unless you, <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure you could, or unless you play in the two position, which is synonymous with shooting first and pass later. We've had a couple fouls. Larry Robinson picked up his first. At the other end, John Berry picked up his third. Now we're back into action with Weber doubled. And swing it around. Williams dancing on Maloney and can't hit the shot. Matumbo vacuums in the rebound. And see, the difference there was Jason was looking to shoot last. He was looking to penetrate, look, and then he shot as a second thought. And I always believe the shooting percentages go down when you shoot because you have to. Matumbo, 10 rebounds, but just two points. Henderson rejected by Weber and fouled inside by Chris, who is a free agent to be. And has not made up his mind what he'll do at the end of the season. The Kings can pay him the most. And he's operating without an agent because it's very clear how much money he can make for the many years he has served in the NBA. No, he doesn't need an agent. I can tell you right now how much he's going to make next year, and that's the maximum. <laughs> and he's going to make a fortune, so that's pretty good. Ray Allen was the first one that did that. He got rid of his agent and made a decision on what he wanted. Well, tomorrow night, the Phoenix Suns will be hosting the San Antonio Spurs, and it's second matchup between the Lakers and the Blazers at the Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon. All tomorrow on TNT. Then the big game is at Toronto, New York Knick game Thursday night on TNT. Well, they said a lot of this. the Knicks are hot. They've been playing some good basketball of late. They've won two in a row. And a great playoff battle last year. Just a rivalry that's really blossoming. A three by Williams. Good once again. Right between the eyes. And you see the difference there. He was ready to shoot. He just was ready to shoot. He wasn't looking to do anything else, and that's why he made that shot. He's got five three-point shots tonight. Robinson, guarded by Barry, feeding to Henderson, ball going away. Glover does not save it because it's picked off by Pollard. Back to Barry, shoves it to Corlew, and he lost it inside as it was knocked away by Atlanta's emerging defense. 21 seconds to shoot, 10 3 to play here on the fourth. Kevin Harlan, John Thompson, Danny Ainge, Craig Sig. I still think this Atlanta Hawk team could develop into a pretty good team if these guys stay together and really focus, particularly with Jimmy Jackson coming back and, and you're moving uh, Terry over to the two spot or the other guard spot, I should say. It doesn't seem like a 4-16 and 16 team to me. Definitely not. Well, not to me. The coach made a good point. You know, Dikembe through his troubles so far this year, Jimmy Jackson with his injuries, those guys are so important. They just don't have the depth or the experience to make up for those kind of injuries. Well, yeah. and, and as you said, Danny, you know, they've got to be strong enough that when you get in the fourth quarter and the team makes a rush at you, you have to have enough substance to, to, to maintain how you've been playing. The third foul has gone on to Corley. Fast break points tonight on our stat track show the 21 19 fast break point advantage for the Atlanta Hawks. It's That's a lot of fast break points is. compared to the rest of the games that are going on That's in the NBA this year. Robinson, Lover, Maloney, who made his mark in the league as a three point shooter. Henderson, the fake on power, drives by him, takes it inside. Matumbo puts in John just his fourth point tonight. Well, and I think, you know, points scored are not significant with him. He doesn't believe that. He always wanted to be a big-time scorer, and I told him that his game was blocking shots and rebounding. Well, Dikembe, not only that, but he can hurt people, too. You see him coming off the screen right there, sticks his knee right into Jason Williams' thigh. Dikembe's been known at delivering a few knees and a few elbows with that bony seven-foot-eight body of his. <laughs> well, and I tell you, in, in that post position, there's no place for the meat. You make those little guards feel it coming through there. <laughs> Timeout. For the tape, and when I saw how close he was to the basket without jumping then <laughs> I said, please send him. I just wonder if they played the nine-foot baskets over there, Coach. <laughs> what year was that? I don't know. I didn't keep those records. <laughs> Nor did they keep them hey, hey, but do you know his full name? No, I don't know his name. I heard that story. Whoever came in the hospital first, they named you after that person. That's like that. So nine people came in, they gave him nine names. I heard that story that Kim May said a hundred times. John, you did not play, did not play his freshman year at Georgetown, did he? No, he didn't play his freshman year because they didn't offer the SATs, which was one of my problems, in his language. And here's a guy who is really a very, very bright student. He wasn't able to get the SATs in his language, so as a result of it, he ended up having to sit out. I heard you send Michael Jackson to the airport to verify his height. Yeah, and if he came off and was not 7'2", leave him. Don't <laughs> even bother to pick him up. Weber gets the free throw, and here at the other side now is Maloney. Good fake by Williams and got it down. 
We haven't talked a lot about Mac Maloney tonight, but he's a good player. Had a good success in Houston, in, in and out basketball. Again, a guard, not a one, not a two. Just a good shooter, a good decision maker, and a guy that gives his effort every night. Look at Jason Terry's defense. We talked all night about his sparkling offense, but his defense forces a jump ball. Sacramento High has one turnover the last 16 minutes back to the first half. Good effort by everybody right there. Turkolu, you saw him take off and go to the ball. You know, that's one thing Stepanovic doesn't do is go to the floor. But Turkolu, he goes to the floor. He's a complete player. Stepanovic. I'm sorry, not Stepanovic. Stoyakovic. He's not playing tonight. Sorry. Yeah. How about Steve Stepanovic? Uh, another great whoever bitch. you were talking about, he doesn't go to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Too many itches. Here comes Maloney. Nice feed. And it goes to Terry, but can't convert. Another rebound by Weber. And Barry for three. Good! A three ball! Barry has had a rough night shooting. He's two of six, but he puts an eight and a clutch three-point basket from outside. And the Hawks should have gotten back faster because they pulled up because Dikembe was in the lane. He did his job. And if the perimeter people had hustled back, they would have been able to have prevented that three-point shot. Nice drop pass. Jackson to Henderson. Jimmy Jackson with a good feed. Point game. Kings by two. They're hanging in there right now. You know, Sacramento's really picked up their offensive explosion here, but Atlanta just hanging in, making some tough shots. When they need one of those fourth quarter victories you were talking about, Danny, a lot of times something like that gets the team over the hump mentally and changes the whole way they play for the season. Chris Weber made it look easy. He was trying to penetrate on Henderson, but he was denied, so he just popped in a 20-foot jump shot just like that. Well, it looked like he was trying to make the Globetrotters there for the first 10 <laughs> seconds of that possession. 17 points for Chris Weber with 13 rebounds. Another double double. Jackson inside. Tap up good. Henderson was jousting with Weber. And Henderson credited with the two. Well, Atlanta's getting too many putbacks. Sacramento's got to keep them off of the boards. They're getting a lot of second shots off of missed baskets. Weber again. Everything goes through Weber on this team, doesn't it? Everything. Especially this time of the game. Yes. Especially this time of the game. You see Henderson right here. Jackson done, doing a great job of using the pick and roll. A prayer shot by Henderson. Thought he got fouled, but a very difficult shot. Having to earn everything. Right here, Jimmy Jackson misses. Henderson again earns it. Weber with great position, but just gets out jumped. Henderson has three fouls. Here's Weber at the line. They have taken out Porter. And they have put in Pollard out there with Barry, Weber, Christie, and Williams. And the Hawks out there with Matumbo, Jackson, Henderson, Maloney and Terry. Weber again. 18 points, 19 points, 11 consecutive doubles by Weber. Fans in Sacramento hold up signs during the games at Arco Arena. Stay. They want him to stay. They want him to three sign. So far, he's not budging. Three by Maloney. That's right down the middle. Matt Maloney hits the home run, and the Hawks climb to within one. Well, a big shot at a big time by Matt Maloney. He's a stabilizer on that team, and as I said earlier, he doesn't have a lot of athleticism, but he definitely knows how to play. Comes from good stock. His dad was a heck of a coach at uh, Temple with John Chaney. Weber missing the shot. Pollard trying to get it. Matt Maloney gets it. Maloney's averaging seven a game tonight. He's got 13. Here comes Jimmy Jackson. He's got 17. Looking for Henderson, who's got 16. The shooting in the game, both teams at 45%. Weber picks up his fourth personal foul. The Kings have hit eight threes. The Hawks have hit five three-point shots tonight. Rebounding advantage, plus seven for the Kings, 45-38. It's Terry. Plus, Terry is lighting it up. Oh, and that's more significant. I wanted to see when he could make big shots, Danny. A lot of people can make shots in the body of the game, but now we're coming down the stretch, and he's still on fire. Well, he made a big one against Portland this year. He went and took on his old college teammate, Damon Stoudemire, for the game winner. He has no fear, and it looks like he's just having fun out there. And he has 29 tonight. He had 30 against Milwaukee and 32 against Cleveland last week. It's Christie looking for Weber. Henderson's on him, shot clock at seven, into two, Weber drives down the lane, rebound by Jackson. Well, you think that Atlanta doesn't want this game, look at that bench, that bench is even up Danny on defense, they want to get over the hump and really win this game, they're really into it. 
Well, Sacramento's offense has really become stagnant, just giving the ball to Weber, letting him play one-on-one. -on -one. No one else is getting involved in the offense right now. Shot missed by Jackson. The Hawks lead at 92-91. Christie, a two-point shot. Rebound to Kembe Matumbo. He's got 13 rebounds. Terry the other way, going against Barry. Tapped inside, retrieved by Jason Williams. This place would have gone crazy if he made that little runner. He just beats everybody up and down the court. Pollard with the screen. Off to Weber, back to Williams. Maloney defender. Screen by Weber, that sets up Williams for two. Pollard and Jackson collide, and that's called on Scott Pollard of Sacramento. The Hawks have beaten Sacramento nine consecutive times, and they lead by one right now. Things like that you can't control, but you cannot give them easy baskets in transition or on second shots right now. And you've got to force them into a half-court game, as you've been saying, Danny, because a lot of the uh, Kings uh, are doing is standing around and taking up long shots, and that's what he means when he says long shots, long rebounds. If they're going to throw up threes, you better box out and you better chase down loose balls. Sacramento has missed their last five field goals, and so Atlanta's on Jimmy Jackson. One of the reasons why he has had a robust performance of 17 points. Missing another free throw. He's missed four free throws tonight. The Hawks from the line, 21 of 28. The Kings, 15 of 20 free throw shooting. 18 for JJ. The Hawks by two. They led by 11 in the first half. The Kings have led by as many as nine. Jason Williams. Devons with Matumbo on him. Barry tries to cultivate something, and he feeds outside. Devons. Rebound by Henderson, saved by Jackson, retrieves it for Maloney. And he'll surge up the side. Matt Maloney. And you can see just exactly what Lauren Kruger said in the timeout. You know, everybody collapsed. Guards, centers, big guys. Nobody leak out. Everybody get those loose balls and rebounds. Jason Terry, that ball out of the reach of Jackson and the 12th Atlanta turnover. They only had a couple turnovers at halftime. Well, and that one hurt because this is a crucial time in the game, and you want to really take care of the ball. At least you want to shot it to go. You don't want to lose a basketball without having an tip, particularly an uncaused turnover. Colder was back in the game. That shows you how much confidence Rick Adelman has in the rookie. Christie took it inside on Jackson, who draws the foul. And Jackson's got five. Much to his surprise. Well, right here, Christie gets good penetration into the middle, stops, leans back in. Not much of a foul right there. He stuck out the elbow to initiate contact with Jimmy Jackson. Christie missing from the free throw line. He is an 88% free throw shooter. Again, Jackson with the five. And Christie, who creates so much chaos with his defense on the floor, hits another free throw. So Christie tonight, in a starting role, has put in 18 points, grabbed six rebounds, assisted five times, and had three steals. Jackson drives on Tocoli. Rejected inside by Divas. Jackson can't save it. They'll go the other way with just under four to play in this game and the Hawks leading 93-92. Tocoli's doing an excellent job at defending Jimmy Jackson. That's two or three times they've tried to isolate him and take advantage of an, uh, of an advantage, but they don't have one against Tocoli. He's doing a great job. Here comes Christie. Weber detonates and drives inside and throws down a left-handed sledgehammer. And see, Dikembe couldn't get there because he's conscious of those four illegal defensive calls right now. He can't cheat like he normally does to get there for the block. Sacramento had gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Henderson across the lane, dishing back to Jackson, flipping it over to Henderson. The fake by Weber, and Cowell! Well, Allen actually had a, a layup on that because the referee did not call the, the play when he drove in and knocked the player down, and all he had to do is go up and put it in, and he passed it out. Here's Christie slashing down the lane, rejected by Matumbo. Never twice. <laughs> <laughs> Big fella says pride is involved in this. You better dunk it the way Weber did. Henderson. Evans with the rebound, under three to play. Sacramento has not won in Atlanta since 1988. They've lost nine in a row and 11 in a row here. Weber fighting for position. 
Rebound is brought in by Matumbo. You know, I don't like how teams in this league, they do this a lot. They don't push the ball up the court at the opportunities. Even at the end of the game, everybody wants to walk the ball up the court. Take advantage of it. Explore the fast break. Instead, you get the ball into Weber a lot, play a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball. They've lost their movement. Right here is the first time they get an easy basket. They've had to earn everything very hard instead of running for easy opportunities. Well, it has been a great experience, and this arena hosting an interactive game tonight between the Atlanta Hawks and the Sacramento Kings. Best record in the NBA, Sacramento, percentage-wise, and 14 and 4, record-wise, and everybody enjoying this game. He looks tired. His big day is coming up in a couple weeks. <laughs> Like that, huh? Too much defense for him. <laughs> That's right. Here's Terry, Matumbo, Henderson, Jackson, along with Maloney out there. Terry outside to Maloney. Shot clock at three, and they lose it. And picked up by Jason Williams. Another great defensive play by Doug Christie, but again, another opportunity to run that they did not take advantage. It's going to slow the game down, and this is where they're not at their best. Christie tried to get it inside and was fouled quickly by Atlanta, and Jason Terry may have been the guilty party. And I think the significant matchup of the other end was exactly what Danny said. You had Doug Christie guarding Terry, his length, uh, and also playing at half court nullifies a lot of Terry's quickness at that point. Here's Christie, 6 of 7 from the free throw line tonight. Now he has 19 points. The guy who played for Toronto last year had a career year with the Raptors. And he's going to have a career year this year. He's struggling with his outside shot. He's shooting the ball good from the line, and he's shooting great from the three-point line. But this guy, just overall game, has been definitely the catalyst in their difference of, of the Sacramento team defense. He does a little bit of everything. He's another player, Coach. It's just a guard. Yeah, exactly, and he's smart enough to know what the team needs and supplies it. Rejected by Weber, picked up by Terry, shot clock at four of three. He's a flamethrower! Well, Vlade could have had that rebound. He just seemed to go up with two hands. Instead, he tried to just kick it out to the guards. Unfortunately, he kicked it to the wrong guard. But, and that's painful when you kick it back out to the best player on the other team as far as shooting is concerned. Weber inside. Rebound by Matumbo. A two-point Atlanta lead, 98-96. Timeout taken by the Hawks. Pandemonium inside Phillips Arena. Jason Terry has been an assassin tonight. 32 points. And that right there knocks the Hawks on top, 98-96. to Do what Jerry Payton would love this. <laughs> yes, he would. <laughs> hey, where do, I get a co where do I get a copy of those books? Let's go get them. You and I both. We need to sell those books if they have that effect on somebody. He has put on a sizzling display. Four fouls now on Henderson. And he has a season and career high of 34 points on national TV. And the last two here. Well, I mean, he just has no fear. He's been hot hand. They call timeout. Kruger did a good job of making sure that Jason Terry got the ball. He kicked it out. It turned right around, got the ball back to him. And as the free throw by Weber goes in, John, the interesting thing about Sacramento, they have missed nine of their last ten shots. They've had one field goal in the last six and a half minutes. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Alan Henderson. He's done a good job of defending Weber one-on-one. -on -one. Done a real good job, and they have not been able to get out in transition and get baskets. And that's what they love to do. They've been playing basically at half-court offense. Kings came into it tonight with the best record, best winning percentage in the NBA. Maloney to Terry. He's devoured the Kings tonight. And a foul called on Christie. He picks up number five. Well, and Jason Terry hurt his leg last time down the court, got a bump, still knocked down the shot, even though he was injured and limping. Gets the ball here with nine seconds on the shot clock, attacks Christie, gets by him with his quickness. The greatest cure in the world for an injury of a guy that's that hot is to give him the ball. It's better than any doctor in the country. Oh, yeah, or when that shot goes in, <laughs> it heals quick. Exactly. <laughs> Real fun. <laughs>
But they'll limp when they go back to defense, then. <laughs> they'll limp when they go back to defense. Atlanta Hawks with one of the worst records in the NBA coming into tonight, 4-16. They've lost three consecutive games. They began the season 0-7. And the first year coach, Ron Kruger. Now, 36 points for Jason Terry. He has been ruthless. 10 of 10 from the line. Defensive teams this year in the NBA has allowed a team to go over 100 points. And only the second. Sacramento has one field goal in the last seven minutes. 35 seconds to play. They're down 102-97. Well, and this is the biggest fear Rick Adelman had coming in was just the way they're playing on the road. He doesn't understand why his team doesn't play quite as good and play quite as confident on the road as they do at home. A spinning move by Christie inside, shiftily putting the shot up. Rebound by Jackson. No shot clock. We're down to 18 seconds to play, and they quickly foul it with 18.8 left on the fourth quarter clock. Give the ball to Jason Terry. Let him score some more, Jimmy Jackson. Jason's going, hey, give me the ball. You've missed four. I haven't missed any. <laughs> he has been wicked all night long. Does he have to tell him to give him the ball? I guess. He was he was asking for it right there. But then he's not limping now. Jason. Jason. <laughs> he's not limping. Winning and scoring cures him in injury. Oh, no, he'll be dancing tonight. <laughs> and jocks and jills. <laughs> Oh, man. Here's Jackson at the free throw line. And that was 19 points tonight. See what the Kings have missed down the stretch, and it has killed them. As they plunge downward, 18 seconds left. Another timeout taken by third-year Sacramento coach Rick Adelman. Taken to the playoffs the first two years. But they continue to struggle against the Hawks. 97 and you're looking right in the eye of your fifth loss of the season. That's the timeout story. Inside the NBA is on deck with Peter Vesey, the Jet, and AJ. Williams the drive, scoops it up for two with 12 seconds to play. And to Terry. On inside the NBA, some very interesting stories tonight. Stefan Marbury went ballistic in New Jersey tonight against his old team, the Timberwolves. That was a great performance by Steph. And we're all going to talk about the Denver Nuggets situation. They do play tonight. The uh, somewhat of a boycott by the shoot around by the players today at the shoot around called by Coach Dan Issel. There are a lot of details with that story, and Peter and the gang will get you caught up. And those, and then Danny and John will comment later on tonight. A happy to Kembe Matumbo. He has not had many times to smile this year with this team. Well, and, and Dikembe really wants to do a lot of scoring, Danny. You know, but his, <laughs> his role, as I've told him many, many times, is blocking shots and rebounding. Jason Williams hit five threes tonight. Henderson gets it. Larry Robinson holds it. And Weber holds Robinson. Three seconds left. Atlanta with their first real quality win of the season. It comes at home. It comes on national TV. And for a coach like Ron Kruger, it couldn't have come at a better time for his team that entered tonight having lost three consecutive games. Well, in particular when you have pieces coming back. I mean, you've got Jackson coming back. Uh, now when you look at Jason Turry, he's like a new player out there because he's identified himself now as a star and a score offensively to Kembe coming back. This team can be much, much better than the record that it has indicates. I think what this team needs more than anything is a good low post score to open it up. They got some good perimeter players, particularly in Jackson and Terry. Maloney's an excellent outside shooter and keeps the game under control. But, you know, Dikembe is not too good down on the block, but he don't sure makes a difference that. on don't the defense. Don't let him know. I told him he'd be in Mabutu's army if he shot. <laughs> Final score. So Atlanta finishes the game on a 12-3 run the last two minutes and 20 seconds. Lon Kruger gets his fifth NBA victory. The Hawks now go to 5-16. And, and the Kings, who came in percentage-wise and record-wise with the best record in the NBA, will drop to 14-5. And, and Craig Sagan, we send it over to you. Well, here we go again. Another career high for Jason Terry as your idol, Gary Payton, says confidence counts. How high is your confidence right now? 
My confidence is good right now. I mean, when you shoot the ball as much as I do every day before practice and after practice, the shot's going to fall. I mean, I, I had a rough start. We started out 0-7. But now I think we got Jim Jackson back, and we might have that right formula. Coach Thompson said Jason Terry is hitting his shots, but I want to see if he can make them down the stretch. Let's remember, you did win a national championship at Arizona. You used to make those shots, aren't you? Oh, yeah, we used to making those, uh, thanks to Coach Olsen back at the U of A, all the Wildcats, Seattle, Washington. But, yeah, I mean, down the stretch in ball games, I mean, I didn't come through in Cleveland. I told Coach, don't go away from me, though. You know, my confidence is still high. I made some key baskets tonight. You're known as a very superstitious person. You guys were 0-16 when, when trailing or tied at the end of the third quarter. You'd never come from behind in the fourth quarter. What do you do now? We just keep going from here on, man. Just keep wearing these headbands and popping them. Pop them collars. What other superstitions do you have? Chicken fingers before games, high socks. Check the high socks. <laughs> I'll be talking to you again. We may have to televise all your games now, too. Hey, we need one more, baby. Everybody at TNT Turner, we need one more at least. All right, let's go back to the table with Kevin. Mesmerizing performance by Terry with 38 points. Atlanta has now beaten Sacramento 12 consecutive times in Atlanta and 10 consecutive times overall. And the final score tonight, the Atlanta Hawks beat the first place Kings 106-99. For John Thompson, Danny Ainge, and Craig Sager, our producer Mike Burks, our director Lonnie Dale, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Phillips Arena. Now we go right to Ernie Johnson in the studio.